So that's how it started. I looked at it and I honestly, if I have to be honest with you at that time, if I had, to, if someone had to ask me, do you think this is actually yeah. going to pay those bills? No, <laughs> no, never. If it wasn't for my failures, I wouldn't be where I am today. And what's to say I'm not going to have failures two months from now or two weeks from now? What's to say the next product that I'm going to launch is going to be a hit? I have no idea that it's going to be. Awesome. And that's powerful, man. It right? is. I mean, the, the mindset to own who you are and understand everything that is in your control from your decisions to the actions that... But you know, Nabil, the thing is, a lot of girls will ask this question, and I know this, they will say, but how do you come to that? The thing is, you don't come to it overnight. And I would tell him, but you know, for like 30 bucks you're making me drive here, or for 20 bucks you're making me drive here. And he would tell me, money is money, if it's 20 bucks or if it's 30 bucks. So I need to break it down. It's easier for me. I need to look at it into smaller portions and I need to say, okay, if I can get through this today, tomorrow I can do this or the next day I can do that. In the times that we live in with the social media, with the access to social media, with everything else around us, it's so easy to get manipulated by what's going on around us. You look at someone else and they've got the perfect life or her page is growing or she's got so many followers and so many likes. There could be a business there that's got 2,000 followers, but they're turning over a million rands it's a, a month or a year, whatever. And there could be someone who's got 48,000 followers and she's not. I mean, wh what are your followers? What are your likes if you can't, if you're not interacting with them, if they don't love you, if they don't have trust and faith in you? It's the recipe for every bit of success that you've seen in such a short space yeah. in time yeah. in a business that is confusing so many people. <laughs> Ten years from now, when somebody's asking their phone, hey Siri, hey Alexa, please find me. Sorry, Siri's actually speaking to <laughs> you right now. <laughs> please, please find me the, 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 the best makeup artist. Um, are you going to remain relevant? You know, the thing is, it's, uh, there's always two options in life. It's either the easier option or it's the longer option, but it's far more rewarding. Hey guys, welcome back to Money Talks Interviews. And today we have Aisha Sidat. Aisha, you have been described as a mom entrepreneur who has built two incredibly successful businesses in two separate industries. Kriya Lifestyle, which has an unparalleled reputation that's growing quickly throughout the kitchens and cabinets of South African home cooks, enjoying your exotic range of all natural spices, mouth watering tea blends and sauces, and Makeup by Aisha Sidat, where your skills as a pro makeup artist are described as art, widely recognized and desired by women internationally. And incredibly, both of these businesses were built on a social media platform. Thanks for being here, Aisha. Thank you for having me, Nabil. It's a pleasure to be here. Aisha, how, where, why, when there's two businesses that you've completely built on your phone? Yeah, yeah <laughs> literally on my phone, because to this day, I don't work from a laptop. It's incredible. I, d I don't. Um, I'm not. I, my friends tell me technology scares me. Um, and it's true. It really is true. Um, so it's from my phone. Yes. And I mean, I, we spent a bit of time together and Aisha, Aisha talked me through a lot of her history and story and how a lot of things brought both her passions, food, uh, makeup. And today we're going to go into this story. Aisha, tell me, where did it all start and how did you, and we're going to get to the how to, but where did it all start, Aisha? The makeup started um, almost eight years, uh, seven, seven, six, seven years ago. Um, that was a passion of mine. Um, I got into it technically because my mom uh, used to own a boutique and we could never find makeup artists to do makeup for the models when we used to have our shows and that. So that's how I got into it. It was always something that kind of like um, always... I looked up to it and I would look at all these girls done so nicely and I would say, that's amazing, I'd love to be, I, I, I wish I could make someone look like that or myself look like that. So makeup started from there and I think 
when we started, Instagram was just starting. Um, people were just getting into Instagram and it was like how TikTok is now. Um, and I often wonder if, tic, if like a few years from now, we actually, if I should get into TikTok or not. And then my sons tell me, hell no. If there's <laughs> one thing we think you should never ever do is TikTok. So that's uh, closed this thing for me. So I'm not getting there. But yeah, makeup started seven years ago. And um, seven years later, we still doing what we started off with. It is basically just as simple as that. Um, I've, I've uh, lost count of how many faces I've done over the years. I actually often feel guilty because I know people by their faces or <laughs> I look at someone and say, haven't I done your face before? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my journey. I mean, there's not much there. I started because I just wanted to be able to make people, girls, feel good about themselves. Um, to be able to look at them, but also not change them. I think makeup is such a... You can really just change a person if you do someone's makeup wrong. And I think for me, it's always about, I feel a person. When a client sits on my chair, I've got to feel her mood. I've got to feel her energy. I've got to feel her vibe. Um, in the first five minutes, in the three questions that I ask her, what are you wearing? What is your hair going to be like? And, you know, where's the wedding and that? I already try to sort of gauge what sort of person or what her thing is when it comes to her personality. And if it's someone new, if it's my older clients, then obviously over the years I've come to understand and realize what they love and what they don't. So, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I mean, you, you, we spoke about uh, before this session about how makeup is so much deeper than just some uh, colors on your mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. and how it's the basic representation of how you choose to show the world Absolutely. who you are underneath all the layers of life. Absolutely. And I mean, we, we're going to go into that story, but now I'm going to move on to Korea, which is a completely different industry, <laughs> which is food. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we all have a passion for food. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, when we started Korea, we actually, it was just a journey that I was sharing because I had gone through a divorce and the morning period that you've got to sit at home and the, the, that's what we call, um, I didn't know what to do with my life. And so the f very first followers that have been with Korea from the time I started will know that I basically just used to share whatever, whatever I was cooking uh, during the day. And from there, it was like, why don't you give cooking classes? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And then, then obviously there came a time where, we, where I needed money to pay bills and long bills of that. And I was like, okay, fine. I train uh, at the gym. There are people there that are always looking for fresh meals. Everyone does frozen meals. No one does fresh meals. So we started with that. And then something happened eight months later. And I said, well, I'm going to get into spices because these were done as gifts for friends. And uh, so it was, it was from a point of necessity absolutely. and you winged it all the way through absolutely absolutely <laughs> no i mean absolutely. For, for those of you that are watching and don't know an iddat period is after a divorce in islam uh, the rule state that uh, you have to have a mourning period a specific period and how, how long is it three months and ten days for three divorce. months and ten days where you don't to, leave the yeah, house you don't you don't yeah. leave the house you don't uh, meet uh, men or, or men that are not blood uh, a connection to you so other than your brother your father you're not allowed to or come in in the presence of men that are not related to you blood wise uh, so yeah you it's 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 a period where you're supposed to sit and reflect and you're supposed to mourn you're supposed to decide it makes you think and figure out what your future is going to be because you've come out so it's it's a lot of things and but I mean, the, the human aspect of what do you do with all that time? Uh, I mean, we, we make fun of people taking Instagram Absolutely. selfies, but this literally Absolutely. translated into an entire Absolutely. business for you. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Nabil, I, I have a friend of mine who's extremely close to me. And uh, just before I decided on the actual, I mean, just before the whole divorce proceeding, 
You know, often as women, we sit together and we talk and I would tell a close friend of mine, I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it. And she told me, she, she brought it up and she said to me, just do your idda properly. You'll see, it'll all work out. Unbeknown to me, I started a journey when I was in my idda to what it is today now. So, you know, it's such, I mean, we, we, you don't, I always say this, I always say, um, your religion and your beliefs, you don't really have to see, I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to see in someone, but it goes a lot more deeper when it comes to how you feel and what you look at and how your perspective in life is. So for me, that really was a mourning period in terms of, not, not of my actual divorce, because that I had come to terms with a long time ago. Um, but it was a time to sit and reflect and see where I wanted my life to go, where I wanted my energies to go. And I was taking all that energy and shifting it into something that I really enjoyed and I loved. And that's, that's what's happened basically with Kriya. And I mean, you, you didn't actually, uh, you, through the divorce, I mean, you have three kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you, you went through this, this, this process as a single mum, mm -hmm. through a divorce, financially, uh, I'm sure that was a struggle and I'm going to ask you about that just now. But what does it take? I mean, some people might go, life isn't that easy when these things happen mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, life after a divorce for a female is synonymously renowned to be a very tough time. I mean, uh, the statistics are 20%. I mean, actually, all females mm -hmm. suffer a loss of income of up to 30% of the divorce mm -hmm. versus males who actually see a, uh, an increase in income after divorce. It's definitely not easy for women. And knowing, knowing you, Aisha, Aisha stands for women fiercely. She speaks her mind. She says it as it is. And uh, I, I think it would be beautiful for you to, to show that passion, that uh, resilience. And as to why is it, what was inside of you that made you just go from the, the lowest point, I'd say, to, 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 to breaking out into a business, let alone creating a lifestyle on your own terms. So I think, like we discussed earlier, that started many, many years ago. And I think over the years, um, I didn't even realize how much it, had, it was going to impact on the person that I would become. Um, because I personally only see this now as I look back. Um, so, like I was saying, when I, when we moved back from Pakistan here, and I was at the school, and those that know me for, from them years will know which school I'm talking about. And anyway, it wasn't it wasn't a nice experience. So it was like, so I went through a really bad phase of I wouldn't say actual bullying, because I think bullying is a very strong term. But it was almost like I could. I, I could feel I was being ridiculed because I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't my, um, I had those long pants over my skirt. Um, I most, my sons will tell you. And now when my sons tell me, I have a 14 year old son and he came to me and he told me, um, please, I have a unibrow, you need to get rid of this for me. I understand where he's coming from because I was in all of those places. So when I walked out of school, I literally promised myself never again would a person put me through that sort of feeling that I felt in the two years that I was at that school. Um, and, I, and I really tell this to a lot of girls. I had a choice at that time. I had a choice. It could have broken me or it could have made me into the person that I am. And it really, it really molded me into the person. That mindset was... Oh, hell no, you're not going to do this to me. Um, I'm stronger than you and I'll show it to you. I'll prove it to you that I have more control over this um, than you will ever have or anyone else will ever have. So I think it was, it's definitely been a mind thing more than anything else. And that's powerful, man. It right? is. I mean, the, the mindset to own who you are and understand everything that is in your control from your decisions to the actions that... But you know, Nabil, the thing is, a lot of girls will ask this question, and I know this, they will say, but how do you come to that? The thing is, you don't come to it overnight. Um, I went through it for two years for me to come to the end of 
the last day that I wrote my matric paper and I said to myself, enough. So for two years, I mean, I, I went through it and then I said to myself, okay, I'm closing these doors behind me. I'm walking out of this place into a new place where no one knows me. So I am going to start afresh. Um, I personally think if I had been stronger, I should have said during those two years, enough now. Um, so for me, it's like you don't, you, you, you've got to be easy and forgiving on yourself. You've got to allow yourself to make those mistakes, to say, fine, I've made the mistake. Let me learn from that. Let me grow from that. And those decisions don't come straight away. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it takes years. Instagram or social media has made the world in such a way where we only look at either success or failure. We don't see the in-between. We really don't. And failures shouldn't define you. Absolutely own not. If it wasn't for my failures, I wouldn't be where I am today. And what's to say I'm not going to have failures two months from now or two weeks from now? What's to say the next product that I'm going to launch is going to be a hit? I have no idea that it's going to be. Um, what's to say that someone comes up tomorrow and say, oh, I don't know what she's making a big deal about. Let me show you, I can do better than her. So it's always, you, you've always got to cut yourself some slack. You've got to allow yourself to say, I'm human, I make mistakes, or I made mistakes, it's okay. And I mean, with social media, right? Uh, you can find out anything about everyone and everything about yourself is online. Well, most of it. And this is the world that we're moving in and it's only getting deeper and deeper. And I suppose that's the importance of staying true to who you are, being, who you, who, being yourself and understanding the platforms that you're engaging in. And I mean, we were chatting about this earlier, the ability to um, create an entire business online for relevance of the future and that everyone should be online. And, and, and I think we, we should ask, I'm going to ask you the question, how do you start uh, one company on Instagram, let alone how was your journey in starting it? Because if everyone should be moving online, mm -hmm. uh, you're a pioneer. If you're saying you started Instagram in its early days, yeah. you built an amazing business. But yet when I started on Instagram, I'll, I'll, I'll share something with you. When I started my makeup journey on Instagram, um, I used to tell myself at that time, I used to tell myself, man, I wish I was like, we used to look at, uh, you know, all these makeup artists and, and bloggers that were coming out of uh, UK and, and, and America and all of that. And these guys, were, these girls were so good at what they did, a makeup artist and whatever. And I would tell myself, I just want to be booked months in advance. I just want girls to call me and say, no, they only want their makeup to be done by me. Um, you know, things like that. Yet, um, I think a year into I started my journey, my divorce happened uh, a year or two years. And if I had, if I had maybe three clients in a month, it was a very good month. It was, it really was a very good month. I would say, okay, I have a good amount of clients this month. And, and the food was paying the bills in the in The, the food interim, only right? got started two years ago. Oh. The food only got started two years ago. And so you did what you ago. did. Did you, did you ever end up getting doing... into any debt in that process? I did. I did. So makeup started. Makeup, uh, makeup was my first uh, business, which is why I say that's almost seven years or so. Um, the divorce came a year later. And the year that I took the divorce, um, or I, I, I went through my divorce and whatever, Obviously, the legal proceedings only get started at that time. So I remember very clearly I had two or three good months or whatever, and I was, oh, I, I can't even remember what it was. I remember walking into a brand, a designer brand uh, store, looking at a bag because I've always had the love for bags. When I, when, when I was 17 and I started working, I gave my mom my first paycheck, she was traveling, and I said to her, go get me a bag. Um, that's what I've done from a very young age. And I remember walking into, into the store, coming out of there, sending a picture to my brother. 
and asking him, Mohammed, what do you think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this bag for myself? I don't even remember if I was going to get the bag on the credit card. I don't even remember if I actually had the money for the bag or not. I just remember I wanted to spoil myself. And he wasn't sitting in front of me. We were talking on, on, on messages. And he said to me, buy a bag. And then two weeks later, what? Everyone's seen the bag. You've used it. You've shown it on social media. Everyone's had a look at it. Then what? And he's two years younger than me, but the most wisest man I've ever met in my life. Um, and he said to me, go make memories with your kids. Go take them on holiday. And so I started working. That was July, June or July. Uh, December, I took my kids for, the, for their very first official international holiday, which was paid by me. We did Bangkok, Phuket, Bangkok. And at that time, everyone was like, three boys, how are you going to do this? Are you crazy? Alone? Asia? Bangkok? You've got to be nuts. The questions that came out of my kids um, that, that, you know, or the time that we, we went through as, as mum and sons during that holiday, to this day, I've, I'll never be able to sort of match another holiday with that holiday. I mean, every holiday is different and every time that I spent with my kids is different, but that's one holiday that I'll, I'll forever remember. And this was a holiday that you took in between that you paid for instead of paying for a bag? Yes. Yes. So, so you came back from the holiday, right? I came back from the holiday. And, and, and you and had to bills, pay this, the bills. The bills started coming. <laughs> the bills started coming. The bills didn't necessarily come from the holiday, but the bills now started coming from lawyers. Um, so obviously, when I went through the divorce, it was like, no, um, we'll, you know, you obviously assume that as a father, uh, why would he not pay for the kids? Or why would he not do certain things for the kids? So you think, okay, it's just me. I need to look after myself. So from me, the assumption was there from my part to say, okay, fine, well, he will look after the kids, whatever. So obviously I can afford to spoil the kids and, and you know, do this holiday without realizing at that stage. That it didn't come. That that didn't come. But more than that, what I was fighting for actually came with, so, so we were fighting. So just to put into perspective, I was fighting for a maintenance amount of 6,000 a month, but my lawyer's bills ran up to 300,000. So how, how, so at some point I had to decide, am I doing this? Does this even make sense? I might as well just pay that money myself or work for it myself I mean, instead it's too of big fighting. To ignore, yeah? for something that may or may not come. And the best part is, I can never understand this. You go to your lawyer and he knows the situation that you're in. And yet, I just can't understand how... So, but I mean, that's, that's a different thing on its own, but... No, of course, but it's inter it, you have to say these things. I mean, I'll tell you a quick one on my side, right? Is the other day I had... Um, I had a youngster come in and straight off the bat we spent an hour consultation. We went deep into his aspirations, his goals, his visions and he was so excited in the moment and he was ready for the next session. And, and I mean I said the words out of my bill looking at this guy's finances knowing that he's not going to pay it. But I said it, saw the reaction and I mean I, I, I love what I do, yeah. right? And so what I did was I told him if he shares the YouTube channel and just gets more education and awareness around the topic, leave the bill off the table. And he's still even, I mean, it's our mindset sometimes. Absolutely. We, sometimes people think that this, as the world works, whether the lawyer bill comes or the whatever comes your way, this is what is limiting me from breaking out Absolutely. and making decisions to myself. Um, it's an interesting story, but I'm going to stay to yours. Is that realization, I mean, you clearly said, uh, it, was, it was clear as daylight to you, but not a lot of people know this. Yeah. Not, a, not a lot of people realize this. But how easy would you say it is to make that type of decision and then move forward? I think for me, when I made the decision, it wasn't even a decision of anything else. If I, if I have to be honest with you, when I started Korea, I didn't go into it looking at the final figure. 
right? Uh, once again, I'm going to go back to my brother. And, you know, he's a self-made man. He's achieved whatever he's achieved in his life purely on the basis of him and his creator. He ha hasn't had any help from his parents or my parents haven't spoiled him for anything. And um, I think if I'm not mistaken, if he's going to watch this of you, he's just about completed his I hope he's watching. I hope he's <laughs> going to watch. Um, but he's a hustler. And often when he would go on holiday, he'd leave his work to me. And I would tell him, but you know, for like 30 bucks you're making me drive here, or for 20 bucks you're making me drive here. And he would tell me, money is money. If it's 20 bucks or if it's 30 bucks. It's all these little bits that would add up. Now, for someone that looks at me from an outside perspective, um, you know, like I said, Instagram and social media world and whatever, we look at the designer bags and we look at the designer shoes and we look at the designer clothes and we look at the fancy cars. You don't realize what... So looking at me, if you looked, if someone looked at me just as a person, they would never understand that I would hustle for 30 bucks. Why would she need to hustle for 30 bucks if she's walking around with a bag that's worth 70,000 or 60,000 or 12,000 or 6,000 for that matter? So I didn't look at the final figure. And I, th I, I think we had this discussion where I told you, when I look at the whole picture, it scares the hell out of me. So I need to break it down. It's easier for me. I need to look at it into smaller portions and I need to say, okay, if I can get through this today, tomorrow I can do this or the next day I can do that. So that's how it started. I looked at it and I honestly, if I have to be honest with you at that time, if I had, to, if someone had to ask me, do you think this is actually yeah. going to pay those bills? No, <laughs> no, never. I had no, uh, never. It, even now, it's so So you surreal. found this app, Instagram. Yeah. And you said, oh, I mean, I'm sure you knew about it, right? You, you said, I'm going to post yeah. and post and post yeah. and uh, with the aim to get my, my first book client. Yeah. Yeah. And what about content calendar and how people get caught up in thinking about all this stuff? Uh, none. To this day, I have none. To this day, if you look at my career page, and I know, I know certain uh, foodies and bloggers and makeup artists and whatever, they have, and I have so much. They know, they'll know. These girls will know who I'm talking about because I'm constantly telling these girls. I have so much of respect and admiration to, for them because it looks so synchronized and so in order and in control, and I have. That's amazing. People look at me. I, I was getting my hair done. This chick tells me, you know, I don't know how you organize your life and how you... So yes, I organize my life. Yes, I sort my life out. But if you talk about Instagram and that, no. I'll, whatever I'm cooking, I'll put that out there. Or whatever I'm feeling. I'm very much that kind of person where... And I think that's what my followers have come to sort of expect from me or they, they, they sort of take that from me is what I feel and how I feel or whatever I'm doing, that's what I've put out there. So I don't but think... But you also definitely put in the work. I mean, yeah. I, I actually saw this leading up to this interview. I, I followed your, your stories and uh, you were doing a makeup tutorial, I believe, if I remember correctly. And I remember, you know, Instagram stories has those yeah. click buys and it shows you posted one hour ago for yeah. us. Yeah. And, and I was sitting there and I pulled out my phone and I was like, six hours later, this is that same tutorial. Yeah. And you sat there and this is a weekend and you were filming a makeup so, tutorial. So, so let me tell you, last night I slept. By the time I, so I have this, this habit of trying to, 95% of the time, I'll try and get through my messages. Now on a regular day, I would get about 80 to 90 DMs and about 50 to 60 WhatsApp messages that I need to get through. Um, it's very difficult to get through to me on email because I'll, if I do respond, I respond. So I'm more WhatsApp and, and DMs. But after my kids, after, after everything else, after booking my orders out, my retail orders out, all of that, sorting everything else out, we've got a huge market that's coming up this weekend. By the time I got done with everything last night, I, I think my eyes closed at around 12.30, 12, 12.30. And 
I remember at 4.30, I told my son, please put the oven on because I put in breakfast for them in there. So, you know, it's funny because a very close friend of mine the other day said to me, and I, this is something that I struggle with. She said to me, take the compliment or accept it. And not so much compliment, but she said to me, but I, sh I because we were discussing something and I said, but why me? There's so many others that are working so hard. There's so many others that put in so much of effort. There's so many others that do so much more than what I do. Why me? And she said to me, but you ha don't realize how much work you've put in. We've watched you over the years. We've watched you all the... And Nabil, I'll tell you this. I mean, people look at me and will say, but this is... I don't need to take 8, 10, 15 clients a day. But I will still take it. I'll take it because for me, it's like, it's whatever I can, I mean, whatever I know in my capacity, I can not to overbook, but it's because I've spent eight years of my life building up to this. We live in a time where it's, if, if it's not me, it's going to be someone else very quickly. Um, there's 10 others waiting behind me. So the importance of actually, because now you, you, it's, it's become a wonderful business and there's so much more to come in the future. Uh, the relevance of your, your brand, the relevance of your passion, because I know you, you've created something purely of passion yeah, and fire and absolutely. enjoyment and skill of doing that. But more, more importantly, you winged the business <laughs> up to this point in time. You hustled it all the way through. And, the, um, and I think that's a big problem right now because I can't seem to let go of the control. That's where, I'm, that's where I am right now because I've come to a point where certain parts of my business needs to now be handed over. And I can't do that. I, it's my baby and I feel like no one's going to be able to do justice to what I but have I suppose done. we had this discussion. Yes, you, yes. You've reached a level yes. and there's always another level. Um, so, so for the people watching, right? Summarize, take as long as you can, but you're talking directly to those young females, even males, anyone that, that feels like it's too hard, uh, it's too much effort. Um, how worth it is it and how would you go about starting a business today? On Instagram, online. Um, I would say wherever it is, and I would say your, look, I know, I know it's always about money, right? That's why, I mean, there's got to be reward. If, if you're not rewarded for your, uh, whatever, your time or whatever, it becomes like it's not worth it. So it's always about the money, but that should never be the actual focus of why you start something. Um, just go in there and, and more than anything else, especially in this past two months of this year being started, I would say past couple of months, I've realized. In the times that we live in with the social media, with the access to social media, with everything else around us, it's so easy to get manipulated by what's going on around us. You look at someone else and they've got the perfect life or her page is growing or she's got so many followers and so many likes. There could be a business there that's got 2,000 followers, but they're turning over a million rands it's a, a month or a year, whatever. And there could be someone who's got 48,000 followers and she's not. I mean, wh what are your followers? What are your likes if you can't, if you're not interacting with them, if they don't love you, if they don't have trust and faith in you? So I think the most important thing is to just... And I've advised this to someone very close to me last week. I said to her, look down and do you. That's it. That's literally, I have nothing else to say. Look down, focus and do you. Forget about what's happening on your left and what's happening on your right and what's happening in front of you and what's happening behind you. Keep on doing you. And have the likes ever affected you in your growth phase? And that's the important thing, right? It's never affected me. It's never affected me in the sense because I know. So I said to her the same thing. I said to her, okay, does the likes bring money into your bank account? If that, if that is, the, or is there money coming into your bank account? And she said to me, no, the money is coming into my bank account. What difference does it make? I know people, I mean, we all know people. They've, they've got followers that are bought. 
What difference does a like and a follow, and, and, and however many thousand followers you have mean? When I get messages, so we've got this market that's coming up. It's an epic market. We do it three times a, a year. Um, a majority of our growth came from, you know, obviously my hard work, but a lot of my followers had the chance to come and meet us. It was like that, that platform where they could come. To this day, it's my fourth, fifth market. I still get excited when I get messages in my DMs saying they can't wait to come see me. They're only coming. I've got, I've got someone who's booked a ticket from Saudi. I've got someone who's booked a ticket from Durban to come meet us. I've got someone. So those kind of things still excite me. Not because that's not because they're coming out there to buy my product, but because they have that faith and trust in me because they want to come and see me and meet me. That's important to me. That, that makes my day, really it does. And isn't that the beauty about your businesses is you've been able to understand who you are, quantify that to the things that you like, dislike, you keep doing you. You've created a business online that allows you to live a lifestyle yeah. as you wish you'd like to yeah. live. Yeah. And, and, and you get those things mixed together, it just starts from the simple rules of do you, do you, and, and you know what, it, you've got to find happiness in what you do. It's got to make you happy. It's got to make you fulfilled. Reg so for me, it's like killing two birds with a stone, whether it's makeup or whether it's my food business. When I'm cooking and whatever I'm cooking, um, if you go onto Kriya stories from yesterday, you'll see I did chops and mash yesterday. Yes, I documented that, I videoed that, I did all of that. And that was for my followers that were watching. But ultimately, when my boys walked into the house yesterday, that food was for them, that supper was theirs. So for me, that satisfaction of being able to put food on the table that they enjoy or that they look forward to. So I wasn't at home. I prepared the, 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 the supper and I had errands to run and stuff. And I phoned my son at five and I said to him, I'm on my way home, whatever. And he messaged me and he said to me, what's for supper? And I said, chops and mash. I know that's something they look forward to. Um, so yes, ultimately it was a business aspect of it because if you look at it, when I cook the chops, I use the chop spice from the Kriya range, which I would ordinarily use, whatever. I know, alhamdulillah, when that video goes out, my followers will go out and buy their chop spice, right? Because they know I've used it, they can see how it was made, they have faith and trust in me. But also at the same time, my kids, I got to sit with them on the table, they got to enjoy. So I, I'm very fortunate in that sense that I've managed to sort of combine both. So for me, that satisfaction comes from both places, even with makeup. Everyone that knows me will tell you. I, I, it's, it's a known fact, I'll tell everybody. I can do 20 clients in a day at home. Don't ask me to go out. I do, I do end up going out if I have to because, you know, you've got brides and if you get booked with more and whatever, it's convenience and whatever. But 80% of my clients' bookings are done at home. Why? Because I like to be around my kids. I, they're not in my face. In fact, my client will tell you if my son, my younger son or someone, I'll probably tell him, okay, let me finish up here and then I'll like, you know. But they know I'm there. I completely get that, man. And Aish, um, you, uh, I want to talk to your, your mindset on how you manage all this time because you're not married, right? No. And, and we had an interesting chat on why mm. and how you see value in a trade-off of time. Yeah. Tell me more about that because there's a lot of females watching here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we went through an interesting stat yeah. on divorce, yeah. but very interesting stat is majority of women in the workplace in today's world are female congratulations yeah. Yeah. so far yeah well done to them <laughs> and 54 percent of divorces last year were engaged and initiated by females so female power all in all in making yeah. the decisions of their lives but there's an interesting reason and it'll say a lot about you Aisha please please share with me um, why, why are you not married? So, 
you asked me that question and I said, no, hell no. And then I said to you, I'm not going to say hell no because I, you know, every time I've said no to something, um, Lord Upstairs have shown me that, you know what, wait, hold up, I'll show you. I have more control over this than you have. So I think what I wanted to say was at this time in my life, it would be so unfair to so many people. Um, I have sons. I, my oldest is 14 years old. Um, my middle one's 12 and then 9. And after being single for eight years of my life, um, they, they form a huge part of my life. They do in a lot of ways in, in, in everything that I do. Um, also, that being said, they've become very selfish of my time, uh, of my attention. Um, they've come to accept it and get used to it. And if I had to now settle down with someone or meet someone, uh, let's just put this into perspective here. We're talking about someone who's going to be obviously well over middle age, so 40 and over. We're not looking at someone who's saying, let's grow together. We're talking about someone who's going to say, well, I'd need a partner, walk with me or, you know, be next to me or whatever. So I've got someone that's vying for attention from that side because he's obviously got time on his hand, um, I'm assuming. My sons require the same amount of time from me, if not perhaps more. And for me to actually say all that work that I've put in, I mean, I've got to decide what is more important to me. The past eight years that I've put in, into bringing up men, boys that are going to turn into men, um, do I let go of, not let go, but do I gamble that? These are the trade-offs, right? Do that I gamble is... that? It's a gamble, basically, because I could meet someone and he could be totally understanding or he could not be. And I'm not prepared to take that gamble just as yet. 100%. And, and, and you, you think this way and consider value in your decisions and effects and the outcomes. Absolutely. Not only in your personal life, but oh, everything about your business, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 100%. And if you put it all together, understand your time, understand your capability, put that fire into it. I sh it's... it's, it's, it's it seems simple to you and you speak about it so easily, but that is inspiring beyond measure because it's the recipe for every bit of success that you've seen in such a short space yeah. in time yeah. in a business that is confusing so many people. <laughs> uh, I mean, online is the future. Yeah. The, and, and, and just to highlight the relevance, we, we, we were chatting about this is 10 years from now when somebody is asking their phone, hey Siri, hey Alexa, please find me. Sorry, Siri is actually speaking to me right now. <laughs> please, please find me the, 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 the best makeup artist. Um, are you going to remain relevant? And I mean... Uh, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. So I could say easily. I, I mean, you know, the thing is, it's, uh, there's always two options in life. It's either the easier option or it's the longer option, but it's far more rewarding. And, I, and, I, and I'm very, very, I'm very fearful of this. So often, I mean, I have my mom around me and she's a huge support structure. So another one of the reasons why, and I, and I want the girls to understand this. It's so important. In the past few years, I've realized. So when I moved here after my divorce back home, because I stayed on the farm and I stayed in a small town, my brother had just gotten married and moved out of the house. And I filled that gap in with my kids that my brother had left behind for my parents. And my kids have grown, I mean, they have their ups and downs with their grand, with their nani and nana, but my, the woman that I am today, if, I'm not, if I could be half the woman that my mother is, I'd be very proud of myself. And I'm not, I'm not, I really am not. And I'm very fortunate that over the past few years, life has given me opportunities in a lot of ways. Today also, if I am out in the afternoon or evening and when my boys come in, my mom is there. They don't need my mom. 
They're old enough. They, they're very independent. I've brought them up in that manner. But just someone there to say, you guys didn't read Salah. Get up. Go get in the shower. Or pick up the phone and tell me. She still does it. To this day, she'll tell me, you know, this one didn't read Salah. Or I will actually phone and tell my boys, if I come home and I hear that Ami tells me that you guys didn't read Salah, I will kill someone. So for me, I look at that now and I see how selfless she's been with her time. And yet when I had my kids, she would tell me, because I moved to the farm, she would tell me, don't send your kids to me. I'm not bringing your kids up. I brought you guys up. I've done my work. She's 63, but she continues to do the same thing. Now, for me, to actually say, hold up, I've just met someone. Let me take all of this away from her. Why? Because I'm being selfish for my personal gains and benefits. No. It's not, I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying right now isn't the right time for it. But I mean, it's a support structure, right? And Absolutely. fortunately, especially in Indian cultures, we, we, we do have those support Absolutely. structures. You know, sometimes we see, I see a lot of uh, uh, friends in, in white culture, white friends, wondering who, wow. who I am from school days, How? right? I'm packing your own food. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it's, it's a huge value. It's Absolutely. a huge benefit. But, but I mean, the yes. next level of support structure is generally our friends, the yeah. people we surround with. Yeah. Um, how, how important was those support oh, structures really? through divorce into your new business really? and, and, and making that business I a reality? I can literally count. So I've, I've been, um, I'm trying to remember how a, friend, a close friend of mine once said, and she said to me, we don't need new clicks. At the age that we are at, we've got our clicks, we're happy. And you don't need to have people around you constantly that are trying to make you, because it's scary. It's scary how, so let's take me for example. Just to give you an example, Kriya's got a following of 17 and a half, almost 17 and a half thousand followers. I've got my makeup page that's got 11,000 followers, 10 and a half, 10 plus. And I've got my personal page, which I've just opened now just to share my lifestyle in there because it was getting very confusing with everything else. That's got about 6,000. I had this discussion with Anas the other day. I was telling him, this is how many thousand. And he said to me, well, hold up. Kriya 17,000, how do you not know that the 11,000 from makeup are the same followers of Kriya? <laughs> so he's the one that brings me right down. You need friends like that, that sort of just, you know, level you up and not let you get and your Anas head. Is your, and is your is my eldest son. He's my oldest son. He told me, don't get too high ahead of yourself. You don't know from the 17,000 followers, the sa exact same ones could be the 11,000 on your makeup page. Uh, with the, with the, uh, now, that's not a big number, but I have seen how if you're not level-headed, it can go to your head. It really can go to your head. And I have friends that I've known for years, and we're not, they're not out there on Instagram. They don't need to be, but they're the ones that keep you grounded. You need friends like that around. And you don't need tens and 20 and 30 of them. I can tell you I have five of them. Five that I can pick up the phone and say, or I don't need to pick up the phone. They can message me or we can chat and they can pick up from the tone of my message. Something isn't right. So it's important to have your click with you. Um, and they don't only need to be there for your failure or your success. They're there for everything. Um, so, so a very close friend of mine said to me the other day, she said to me, why are you struggling to accept your success and where you're going? It's because I never thought it was achievable. I never thought, I never, I never looked at that and said, that's where I want to be. I just wanted to get by. I just wanted to keep it real. When I started Spices, 
there was no one that was doing spices. But I didn't start because there was no one doing spices. I came from a background where we only used spices. So when I was cooking, I would look at if a recipe came through to me or I would look, I would look at all these different sources and sources and sources. I'd be like, but what do you do with half a dozen open bottle of sauces? Like you've used it for one dish, what do you do? And that's how I started. And often I actually think to myself, I posted a video on YouTube yesterday. It was a dish that I made in the week. And normally when people hear me on Instagram, they'll like, it's just, it's just who I am. And I used to, growing up, I used to hate my voice. I still hate my voice. I used mm -hmm. to say, you know, look at me how big and powerful I stand, but they look at my size. Can't I be like one of those chicks that like, they've got the soft, squeaky <laughs> voices, sound like a little girl, but I don't. I have this over the top, crazy, authoritative voice. And when Anis was editing my video last night and I was watching the video, like we were watching the edited version, I said to him, look how cool and calm I sound. Can't I sound like that all the time? Because when I talk on Instagram, then I'm like so out there. But, and that's, that's often I'll come across when I'm talking about my, my food that I'm putting out there. And I'll get messages to say, we love how you explain it. We'll, but it's because it's not even that. It's because I'm so passionate about it. It's like the other day I said I made pasta, and I said, guys, this is pasta. It's not kitchery. I can't understand for the life of me why Indians have a tendency to just break the pasta down completely as kitchery. And a after, I, yes, <laughs> and after I put it out there, I thought to myself, oh my God, someone's gonna. There has to be someone who's going to say, who does she think she is? She's not Italian. Where is she? Where is she? Where does she think she's getting this whole thing from? So I think being real, that's who I am. I've never changed that, or I've never wanted to change. It's never occurred to me that I need to change that. But Aish, in, in terms of the business now, right? Uh, your personal brand, who you are, has built this amazing business, two businesses based around things that you're actually passionate about. Now let's go into business topics, right? Competition in the market, saturation of so many makeup sites out there on the internet. Um, what's your view towards that? You're going to keep doing you or yeah, is there... absolutely. Absolutely. Your clientele knows your style. They know what you're about and they... Um, you buy into that, obviously. Absolutely. And you've got to be, look, if I was one of those people that, um, you know, went out there and didn't have an interest in how I look in that, uh, possibly it would have been different. So you've got to be your own, you've got to stand behind your brand. You've got to believe in what you preach in. And that goes the same for my food. I don't sell someone something else. You wouldn't eat yourself or your kids would eat, 100%. Absolutely. So it's what I'm cooking for my kids. It's exactly that's what I'm selling. And I haven't even tried to sell that to you. They've believed in what I said. They've bought, and I am ever so grateful for that faith and trust that they've put in me. So now on to things like marketing strategy finance strategy, all of these wonderful things in a business plan. I believe, um, I mean, we winged it all the way up to today, but how, how, how are you feeling when it comes to your new focus of leveling up that business to its another level and really taking into account advices and, and really thinking of the brand as its own individual business? We're looking at your business today. Um, what's going through your emotions? Because you're a very emotional person. You step up to the challenge. Uh, it, what are your thoughts that, that go through your mind now that it becomes a real next level into this game? So last year, I had this conversation with someone, with a young boy. He's a med student. Um, I'm going to ask him to actually watch this video. I got to know him from the time he was in matric and he used to train in the gym. Little boy. Um, he must have been... 17, 18, I've known him from that time. An amazing little child. And over the years, for all his naughtiness and everything, he's now gone to the States to study med. And he's actually doing 
brilliant there because he's actually working at some research department and whatnot and whatever. So he's, he's, he's done amazingly well. And just before he left, he, we became friends at the gym and whatever. He said, he said to me, Aisha, I'm going. I'm, teach me how to make biryani because how am I going to learn biryani? How am I going to eat biryani when I move to the States? And he came home. And I, I, I invited him over and I gave him uh, uh, this thing on how to make biryani. And Nabil, when I started, um, for months I had this vision of, um, you know, I wanted to be on the shelves of Woolworths. That's, that's what I was looking at. I wanted to be on the shelves of Woolworths. And that's why I wasn't, I had people that would approach me and tell me, you know, we want to stock up your products. We want to stock up your products. We were doing just courier from on, at home. That's how we started. Anas was sitting at home um, booking parcels till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I had a stockist who would tell me, you know, we want to stock your product. And I would say, no, 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 no. I'm not giving it to you because I want to be at Woolworths. I want to be at Woolworths. He came home and he said to me, we were chatting and he said to me, but why Woolworths? Like, makes no sense. He said to me, I want to see, you know, it's going to be so amazing. You're going to have your own brand and we're going to have these spices that's going to come down from these canisters and we're going to dish out as much as we want for our clients and whatnot and whatever. A year late, at that time I looked at him and I'm like, what is, what is this guy talking about? What, is, what does this child know? I look at it now and I think to myself, why Woolworths? I don't want to be, like, it's, it's not my end, this thing anymore. Yeah. Um, there's so much more. There's so much more. I don't know where. I mean, look at Jamie Oliver was created on a brand. Exactly. Yes, he's in Woolworths, but he started creating, do, do, exactly. doing him. Exactly, exactly. Right? What, what's in, interesting out of that story, thanks for sharing that, is this young guy. And I hope you're watching this because it's, it's, I mean, it's beautiful, your perspective yeah. uh, and the perspective that you can find from people way younger than you, different Absolutely. younger perspectives uh, that, that can shape. I mean, they, they inevitably there's wisdom in, in understanding what they grew up in. If, if you're saying you're 17 uh, or, or a few and, years and ago. And I promise right? you, if you kid, look at that kid, you see all his Instagram stories are about having fun, partying, living the life, <laughs> living the single life. That's, that's what he does. Um, you know, his mum, I've scolded him often to say you're giving your mother unnecessary grief. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. So Aisha, I really appreciate those perspectives. It's, it's incredible. I mean, you focus completely on you. Uh, the, the ambition shows, the, the dedication shows, the passion shows, absolutely. And, and you, you've done this journey by accumulating the other skills, <laughs> time management and things along the way. And, and, and your story just says so much about how there isn't no textbook way no, of there starting isn't. something. No, there isn't. Really, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you there isn't. <laughs> because if there was, I would have written a textbook by now. I would have written a textbook. You plan on writing a book at No, not point. at all. What about a cookbook? Not at all. <laughs> not, I won't say not at all, but it's not on the cards. It's not on the cards as yet. Um, you know, I said this to someone the other day. I said to them, a lot of people, a lot of women get carried away. A lot of people get carried away where they want the focus to be them. For me right now, the focus isn't me because I can decide to put myself out there or pull myself away from there. That control is in my hand. I choose what I want to do with that. My focus is my brand. And that is so important to remember. I, I think what people or the young ones that are looking at this and hoping to get something out of it what they need to understand is it doesn't, it doesn't come for nothing. It really, really doesn't come for nothing. There are tears, there are fights, there are tantrums, there are sleepless nights. There's a price to pay. There's always a price to pay. You got to decide how far you want to go. And what price do you want to pay? I've compromised on my social life. I've compromised. That's why I have 
friends where if I'm not at a certain event or whatever, they won't make, I, that's not, I mean, I did that. I did that five years ago. I was there at every event. I was at every coffee. I was at every way where I would get an invitation to. But now you would hardly see me at a wedding, even if I get invited by my clients or whatever. For me, after a full 8, 10, 12 hour day after I've stood on my feet, the last thing I want to do is go attend a wedding. I've got clients the next morning. That sleep is more important to me or being able to sit with my kids is more important to me. So, and, and likewise, when I started Kriya, when we started with the labeling of our bottles, I had no money. I took money that came from makeup and I put it all into Kriya. And even now we're working on something and I said to my mom the other day, everything that I'm making from my makeup page is going into Kriya. Uh, but I know, I know what the long term this thing is. Um, and, and that's what it is basically. My son said to me, because he comes with me to work when I go out and all of those that are watching and they know and they've had me as their makeup artist will tell you, they know Anas is out or Amar is out. He said to me the other day, he said to me, you know, from now onwards, I think you shouldn't take bookings to go out on a Sunday. And I said to him, well, I think then you shouldn't expect too much of a holiday at the end of the year. <laughs> and that's, you've got to decide on that balance. And put that plan and stick to it. Absolutely. Asha, Absolutely. thank you very much. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, you've said so much and I feel enriched. I really enjoyed this conversation. I thank you very too. much it's uh, an absolute for, for being here. Guys, go subscribe to her channel. She just put a YouTube video out. The Instagram page, Kriya Lifestyle and Makeup by Aisha Sirat. Look at her, came amazing, dressed in white, <laughs> shining. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so Guys, much Guys, I hope you enjoyed here. that episode. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Click on that bell icon so you never yes. miss a video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.